I'm Sarah Jackson, and this is Internal Comms Pro, the podcast. We're getting the gears turning as we talk to the experts on our ever-changing world of internal communications. This season, we're shifting the mindset. They never try to force a template into onto any one story. This is the perfect time to really advocate for your storytelling. And again, when I say stories, these things do not have to be epic tales. They don't have to be a thousand words. They don't even have to be 500 words. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Internal Comes Pro, the podcast. We are so excited to bring you a new season to help you shift the mindset. This series is designed to help our listeners shift thinking patterns in a way that will empower them to do their jobs with more ease, joy, and confidence. We're starting off with our first guest, Anthony Wittrado, the Public Relations Lead for Inclusion and Diversity at PGA of America. Now, through the power of storytelling, Anthony helped his company realize how important internal communications was which led PGA of America to becoming one of the top places to work in healthcare. We're taking a step back to look at the basics of storytelling and how you can use your writing to make a change within your organization. So let's tee up our first episode. Hi, my name's Anthony Wittrado, and I am currently the public relations lead for inclusion and diversity at the PGA of America. Uh, But I have also been an internal communications professional uh, for about the pa- the previous five and a half years or so. So something that's very near and dear to my heart. Well, Anthony, I cannot thank you enough for spending some time with us today. I took golf lessons over COVID, by the way. I finally learned that golf is just a glorified term for a big farm party because I like the, we're getting in the golf cart and drinking and driving around. It just makes it a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah. For, you know, hey, if if, if that's how you can enjoy the game, then why wouldn't you just do that, right? For sure. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show. You know, last season, we talked so much about COVID and the new hybrid work and, and all of that. And I know I, I looked at your background and I see that you were a journalist beforehand. And so many internal communicators have been journalists. And it always comes back to the biggest part of their job that when I talk to most internal communicators love is storytelling. Let's start off and tee this up by hearing your personal story. How did you get involved in the world of internal communications? How I got started was, you know, I think anybody who is in this space and probably listening to this pod understands that the media landscape can be fickle and ever shifting to put it uh, nicely. And so I was a sports journalist for many years uh, I, my career started in 1999 at the Fresno Bee, and uh, it was just a situation where in the teens of 2000, I kind of just got a little tired of the stress and every year having to worry about is is this company going to make cuts or is this other company that I'm talking to, you know, when are they going to drop that hammer? So somebody who had made the jump from uh, from media to communication said, hey, uh, we're going to have a, a position opening up um, that no one's held before at this organization. And it was, it was an internal comms position. And so uh, I went ahead and I, and I took that position. And being that it was the first time anyone had held an internal communication spot at that organization, I think they didn't understand the importance of what that position does. And I, and I think in turn, obviously, they didn't understand the importance of internal communications, of, of communicating with the people who work under that umbrella. I would, would come back and I would kind of educate our organization on why this is so important and um, maybe why certain things were problematic there when they could be a little better, you know, all that kind of stuff, all the stuff that we solve as internal comms pros. And after a year, uh, that following spring, Myself, along with some of the some of the HR people I was working with, had raised our employee engagement score significantly to the point where we were named uh, one of the top places to work in healthcare, and and so that was a a big feather in our cap. I love that we're talking to somebody who's a trailblazer and doing these things. But one of the key things that I want to point out that you said to the listeners, the internal communicator 
does have this wonderful opportunity to educate their leadership and employees on the value and whatever internal communication is and what that means for that company. Because it's not like this industry has been around that long where it's defined terms. Like you use the term employee engagement, right? But now there's employee experience, there's internal communication. So to lead that, I think is such a missed step um, in, in a blind spot, I think, for some of our listeners that, hey, you need to reestablish and teach your company about what this what this role is and what it means and, and, and the ROI that you can expect to see from a position like this. So I love that you, you had that story and you talked about that because I think before we get into anything, um, I think that's a good first step. Thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. In, in going to these conferences and in speaking on panels and, um, you know, doing those kinds of things, I've talked to a lot of other pros in this field and they they all come across the same kind of issues where the role might be if it's not take it, taken for granted it's underutilized because a lot of the c-suite and and even some people on, in marcom who maybe have never you know sat in their chair don't understand the importance of internal communications and and when and, you know, an employee might send in a comment on a survey that says, ah, you know, I didn't know that there were food trucks out there on Friday afternoons. Someone should have said that or it should have been posted somewhere. They just take it as, oh, OK, well, you know, we're going to have to alert them. They don't go, oh, you know what? That's an internal communications miss that we should have been aware of. It's not something, especially when, when a position like that is is fairly new, they leap over in the chain of internal communications because they just go, oh, well, we'll just, you know, we'll put it on Twitter, we'll put it on Facebook or whatever, that this thing is happening. And you bypass the whole internal communications process where you actually alert the folks that you pay and who are your best ambassadors. And so, you know, that employee engagement facet is is so critical. And I think educating the leadership on why it's critical really is important because I think then they start to understand ah, okay, this stuff doesn't just happen on its own. And, and I think for, for it's, no, it's, it's maybe to no fault of their own just because it's ingrained in them. They might think it just kind of happens organically and it doesn't, it takes effort. Well, and I know, again, we're focused on storytelling today. And so I think as part of that, I want to, I want to get into that. I think we get so passionate about it. I'm like, we know, we know the value of it. We know the ROI, but even maybe through storytelling, you can show some of the ROI. Can you just high level maybe provide your storytelling framework that if, if I am new or if it have a transition into an internal comms department, give us a little, a high level of what's your storytelling framework that you typically use to tell good stories? Um, I, I let the story sort of dictate that. Um, I, I never try to force a template into uh, onto any one story. You know, I, I sort of give it its its room to breathe, and then and then the story will sort of dictate the best way for you to tell it. One thing I always say to people, and, and I, I don't recall where I heard this, but I heard it a long time ago uh, when I was coming up in journalism, and the saying is, "A million deaths is a statistic." So if you see that written in a newspaper or, or online in an article or someone tells you, you know, we lost a million people because of this and we're, it, it's timely because of, of the current situation we're in with the pandemic. It's sad, but it's, it's still a statistic. When you say one person died because of this same thing and here's their story, now you have a tragedy. And now you have people's ears and now you have people's eyes and now you have people's attention. And so think of it in that way. Why is this unique? If there are a hundred other stories or a hundred other people or a hundred other things that have the same kind of story, find the thing that's gonna make that one unique and lead with that. That's, that your, your goal should be to immediately capture your audience and engage them in what they're reading or seeing or hearing. And, and that's how you really start to get messages across because in internal comms, 
you know, there's always an end goal, right? You always have to communicate something. There has to be a piece of information or something that is actually, you know, it's, it's the job, the job part of it. It might be a press release or it might be just an announcement or something like that. But those things kind of can get lost in the sea of information that people see every day. And they could get lost in the sea of emails that they get every, every morning. But if you can tell a good story, you know, you might be, the, the story might be about those food trucks that are outside on a Friday afternoon for lunch for everybody as, as part of, you know, employee engagement or, you know, whatever. If you can tell a story with that, that's awesome because not only, not only are people going to understand that the news that you're trying to convey or the information you're trying to convey is important. They're going to understand why it's important because you've already told them why you've told them a story and it's very easy to remember a story and to tell that again when you're standing in line at that food truck you know what i mean versus you know oh hey did you see that announcement that was on and then you just regurgitate the where when why and all that people forget those things but they don't forget good stories even if they might get some of the details wrong you know when you tell that story again to somebody else it's good, you know, and, and it was interesting working in healthcare because it was a children's hospital and we would have a ton of like just inspiring, tear jerking kind of stories. And so when we would tell those, you know, we would get emails back and say, I went home and I told that story to my family and they were all crying also. You know what I mean? So it's it's the good story that is really going to stick with people. It's not so much the information, but if you can weave your message into that story, it's all going to get remembered. Are there different pieces of when you tell a story? Like, hey, when you're trying to share X information, is there when is the story tactic most effective? Because, you know, there's all these different tactics we can use to to communicate, but is there... Do you have a list of, hey, all right, when you are doing X, Y, and Z, story is the most effective method? We all have, there's, everyone has their job to do, right? And I, I put job in, in air quotes. And, and that's the feed the beast stuff. You know, you have to get stuff on your intranet. You know, you have to, you know, get your, your audience the information that, you know, you're supposed to. And so sometimes that is just, you know, sticking an announcement up so that way people know about something or, you know, whatever the case may be. But I would say go into everything looking for the story and looking to see if there's a story there that you can tell. You know, not everything's going to have it and you're going to be too busy sometimes and, and you're going to have to prioritize. And, and obviously everybody understands that. But when you can, the story, the stories are not hard to find. If you just take about, you know, it probably doesn't even take five minutes and you get this piece of information and you go, okay, how can I turn this into an actual story? Who, who are the people behind this? How did this come about? Why is this important? When you start to ask yourself those questions, those are the roots of you developing a story, whether you know it or not. It, it really fits everything because I'm telling you a story right now. You know, I, I'm, I'm telling you the story of how to tell a story or the story of how I got into internal communications. No, I, I don't think there's a, a list necessarily where you say, OK, well, this is the one where you would want to tell a story. I think you go into that with everything and then sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You just kind of have to feel that out for yourself. But I would always look for the story because, again, that's the best way to convey information. Yeah, I love that. And I hear, speaking of roots, I hear your journalism roots when you're like, who is this about? What is this about? How did this come about? Is there, do you still use the who, what, when, where, why? Is is that just ingrained in you as a journalist? And and if so, should we be using who, what, when, where, and why? And is there any other kind of journalistic tactics that that have kind of poured into your internal comms row that, that we roll that we can adopt? Um, to help help us craft and tell better stories. Yeah, there are. You know that the who, what, where, when, why stuff is always useful. You know, you should always kind of just keep a an eye out for all of that. In journalism, we use a lot more of of the how and the why um, to tell these stories. When you're in internal comms, you're not necessarily doing any investigative reporting or or anything like that, right? And so, I think the one thing you take out of that is the why. And that is what you, that is what is most important for your audience, even whether they know it or not, because you think about it, 
when you're getting internal communications as an as a staff member the why is what's going to grab you so if we send out a, a an announcement saying you know the PGA is is creating this this collaborative to push um, underrepresented audiences and, and diverse audiences into the golf industry that's awesome and then and that's the what and and the vehicle you know that collaborative is the how but why why do we need to do this because I think it's the most important question that us as communications professionals can ask about everything. And we're sometimes that last line of defense because other people, even on our own teams, don't understand the importance of that question and don't always answer it. So we've all gotten those assignments or those things that have come across our desk and it's like, why are we putting this out? Like, this does not seem, you know, whether it be, you know, an importance issue or a timing issue or whatever, start asking in your meetings or in your, in your talks about this, these projects, start asking why, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this now? Why is it so important to the organization that this get out there the way it is, you know, whatever, whatever your why might be. And, and I think from journalism, I take that question into these roles more than any other, because in journalism, everyone asks that. Your editors ask that, other reporters ask it, you ask it to yourself, it's just ingrained. In Marcom, you might be the only person thinking of that question because other people aren't necessarily trained to do that. And, and it's not that you have to be a journalist to know how, it's just that you have to be aware that that question is important. And some people have that and, and some people just, you know, they're, they're kind of on the conveyor belt of information and they're, and they're sending stuff through and they don't ask themselves if that's the best strategy or if it's the best time or whatever. So I, I would say you always ask why. It doesn't matter what comes across your desk. Why am I going to tell this person's story? Why am I going to tell it this way? Um, why is it going to be written versus on a video or why is it or vice versa? You know, all of that kind of stuff matters. And so I think when you start to ask that and you start to to explore it a little bit, you're going to become probably one of the more valuable people on your team because again it's an overlooked question that not everyone asks and when you ask them and they don't have an answer for it then they start to think about it as well yeah i love that another leadership i think kind of tidbit there and not only asking why when you're going about your work but you're also saying you need to ask why when you're also interviewing people for their story correct so you can keep maybe drilling down to the hearts of these matters. Well, why is that important? Well, tell me about that. And why is that important? And to, until you get kind of to the heart of the matter of whatever it is that you're trying uh, to convey or whatever that end goal is um, that you initially talked about. I love that because we get caught up in so many things in this role. And, and so to have that very common sense, just ask why I think, I just love that we're reminded of that. Speaking of, you know, you you talk about, hey, if you have the time for the story, then we always pick the story. Let's back up a bit because I often hear that, it, particularly if you're coming from the world of journalism and you love storytelling and you want more time for storytelling, but what you were hired to do now with COVID and now with hybrid work and now with the people experience and employee engagement and all these things what I'm hired to do, which included telling stories, is now not what I'm required to do. You know, we often have people say, I'm now in charge of ordering the plexiglass and these huge, very technical software implementations for tools, because guess what? Now we're valued and we get a budget. Do you have any tips on you have to make time for this? And here is why you need to make time, that kind of the ROI on storytelling and, and just the day to day, how can I put this into my schedule and really make time to think through and schedule story time? Yeah, I think, I think that starts with getting your leadership to understand why it's important to tell stories in the first place. You know, no matter where you work, there's stories somewhere, um, whether it's the person unloading the truck or it's the person on the assembly line or it's, you know, the EA in the C-suite or whoever. So there's a story there with everybody 
And it's not just people, it, it's things, you know, there's initiatives at your organization that they're trying to implement, right? And then you go, why, why are we implementing this? Well, because we had this problem and we thought that the only way to fix it was A, B, and C. And so we did this. Guess what? That's, those are the nuts and bolts. You just have to decide to tell it. Any good announcement of information is going to say, you know, we're doing this, da, da, da. But it also is going to have a paragraph where you say, this was needed because, um, or at least it should be, because, you know, people have to understand the importance and why this thing is happening. Well, when you do a story, you're just expanding on all of that. And you're getting into the inner workings of that. And again, that's the stuff that people remember. You know, the, the, the million deaths is a statistic. The one death is a tragedy. It's that because you're starting to understand now the personal part of it. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be about a person, but, you know, the personal part of that initiative that your company is doing, somebody there really cares about it as much as I care about internal comms, as much as the people listening to your pod care about it. Someone at your organization cares about what's going on with the thing that you're writing an announcement about or making a video about or whatever, there's going to be a story underneath all of that. And so I think that, um, you know, and, and obviously time management is a big part of this. I get that because some stories, you know, you, you, it's, it's more than a phone call or two or an email or two. And so getting them to understand the importance of that is, is really, really important. And when they start to understand that, then they start to give you a little more leash, right, on things like, you know what, hey, we should be doing more video or maybe we should start a podcast. You know, those kinds of things start to now carry more clout when they come from you because you're asking the right questions and you're conveying information in a way that maybe your organization never really has before. And when you when you start to, to do that, because guess what? The people in the C-suite, they get entrenched in a story just like anyone else can. Internal Comms Pro, the podcast, will be back after a quick word from our sponsor. The phrase digital employee experience is on every executive's radar since the work from home shift. But engaging employees isn't as simple as adding an app or posting more frequently on employee social. It's about meeting your employees where they are with the information they need and the stories they want. With Circle Broadcast, you can implement a cross-channel comm strategy that makes your team's lives easier and provides a unique digital experience for each employee. Head on over to circle.com slash ICP. That's C-E-R-K-L dot com backslash ICP to learn how the broadcast suite can modernize and simplify your internal communications. Welcome back. In this next part, we discuss why storytelling should be at the top of your list. Now more than ever is the perfect time to capture those stories within your in-person or virtual office. Now let's jump back in. I love that you bring up the C-suite because two things on that. I think the stories give C-suite and leadership the sound bites because they remember them and now that's good talking points um, where you know, they're out in the community or whatever it is their their role, public role might be. And then the second thing, I think you can empower the C-suite to be better communicators by by telling them, hey, let's tell that in a story and you choreographing that and pulling that out of them. I think they would enjoy that tactic as well. So I think the storytelling, yeah, from a leadership perspective is super empowering. And the fact that you're the choreographer of it, again, positions you as uh, once again, the leader and, you know, being kind of this puppet master behind this brilliant story that people are going to love and, and remember. So I love that. You know, write a speech, you know, because some some IC roles, you know, part of the, the job responsibilities are, you know, you have to write for the C-suite. Write up a speech whenever someone has to go talk and just give the A, Bs and Cs. And then write a second one where they're telling a story about your organization or about someone in your organization that eventually gets gets finds its way to the message or has the has the message weaved in and out of it and show them both get their reaction. I guarantee you they're going to pick the story because one it's easier to tell in front of an audience 
it's more engaging. You're going to get you're going to get those eyeballs and those ears, um, and and people are are less likely to tune out. Um, but also, it's just it's something they're going to want to do more than the you know those those, those very basic nuts and bolts. And then they're going to walk off and people are going to start shaking their hand and telling them how great they are for telling that story and how their organization is wonderful. And you're the puppet master behind the scenes who is finding those stories and who is putting them in story form so that person could tell them. Well, and I think when you make the case to so many um, internal communicators do have, I think, software that gives them analytics. I know with with what we use, our sponsor uh, circle, our number one content and for our employees, our employee stories. That's the number one thing that people love the most are those stories. So if if you are listening out there and you're trying to prioritize your work, it sounds like story has now <laughs> risen to the top of the list. And, and we can use story to do the work and move our work forward, particularly there's got to be so many stories now born out of this hybrid work and all the stories around COVID and what we've all, the shared experience we've had together, I think to pull out stories from that to and to use them in a variety of ways, either to make a case or to sell a message. This conversation is just unearthing. You, you need to make time to ask yourself, what is the story behind this? I, I'm so happy we're talking about it. This is the perfect time to really advocate for your storytelling. And again, when I say stories, these things do not have to be epic tales. They don't have to be a thousand words. They don't even have to be 500 words. You know, they could be 30 second iPhone videos. They can be, you know, 300 word uh, little snippets, vignettes, those kinds of things. But those are all stories. And so during the pandemic, especially last year, everybody gets sent home and, you know, we're trying to figure all this out and things are looking how they're looking right now in our country with, with the pandemic. And so who knows what's going to happen next, but eventually people are going to start getting back into offices if they're not already. And that's a really good time to start capturing those stories. Look, we just worked at home for a year and a half. What was that like for you? What's it like to be back in the office now? You know, those are all stories. And, you know, you're set, the, the, the circumstances that we live in are setting everyone up for really good internal communications opportunities where we can do like series. You know, again, it could be a 30 second iPhone video or, or 60 second iPhone video that you post once a week, every Friday or, that, or something like that. And it's people sort of giving you, you know, maybe their experience during the pandemic and what it was like to work from home or what it's like to be back in the office or, you know, why it was difficult for them or why it wasn't or whatever. Or, you know, one way to always sort of start to get the buy in too is to let leadership tell their stories. You know, go to the C suite or go to the directors or the senior directors, whatever it is in your organization, and say, hey, tell us about the challenges and the successes you had working from home. Being a leader who had to work from home, you know, that kind of stuff. Let them pat themselves on the back a little bit, and then you can, you can kind of get to do some of the other stuff you want. You know, this is, a, this is a game for us, too. You know, we have to work the, we have to pull the right levers while, you know, while everything's been what it's been. You know, it really is an opportunity now coming back or, or when we do come back to, to really dive into storytelling mode and say, you know, here's how our organization survived. Well, and I think to your point, internal communicators, there's such a nuance to things and how we get things done that I always talk about the art and the science of the role. And, and you mentioned, I think being a journalist, kind of having this storytelling superpower and, and because so many of our listeners were former journalists now, and I mean, so many of them, what would you say you've got your, you know, your storytelling superpower when you transitioned from being a journalist to going into this world of internal comms, what other superpowers now do you feel like you need to have beyond storytelling that can help you perform in the role that, that you're now tasked with? One of them is learning how to pull those levers with leadership. <laughs> I've heard at every internal communications conference I've ever been to, how do I get C-suite buy-in? Or, you know, how, how do I work this obstacle course because our leadership is, is you know, whatever the case, you know, maybe they're just absent-minded when it comes to IC. So everyone, everybody has, you know, a lot of those same issues, especially the bigger your company. And so, you know, that is definitely one of the things is, is learning how to sort of navigate 
the organization in that way and, and how to position yourself as a leader there. Um, you really can do that, you know, whether, whether you're a manager or a director or not, um, whether you report to managers and directors, you can position yourself in that way if you can understand how to maneuver that. And, and, and part of that is, is it's not necessarily saying, you know, hey, I need a meeting with the CEO tomorrow because I, I have to explain this thing that I'm working on. It's not necessarily that. It can be as simple as you telling a story and let's say, you know, someone says, you know, this company really inspired me because, you know, da 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 da, whatever the case may be. And then you shoot an email to the EA or, you know, if you have the relationship to the CEO or someone in the C-suite themselves and you say, hey, doing a story on this person for whatever it is, and they mentioned this. I thought you would want to know if it's really inspiring. Um, also, if you're, if you, you know, want to have a quote in this story that I'm working on or, or appear in this video that we're working on for it, you know, just please let me know. But I just wanted to share this with you and let you know that the work that we're doing here is getting through to our staff. They love to hear that stuff because you know what they're going to do? They're going to take it to their people or their buddies or whatever and they're going to go oh i was talking to one of our employees and they said that they were inspired by you know and let them have that that's fine but they now have that nugget in their in their arsenal that they can use so you know it, it navigating is 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 even as simple as that so there's a lot of different ways to do it but i think really that is a superpower it is something that is learned um and it's not easily learned it's it's you know, even people who have been at an organization for two decades that have a ton of institutional knowledge might not have ever really mastered that skill or that talent um, because it's both. It's a skill and a talent. Well, I never thought, you know, that, wow, if you are a journalist and you do have that superpower or you do love to tell stories, I never thought of it about using it to have agency. Wow. I've never thought about that. I love that. It's, it's, and it's something, you know, you can use it. You really can use it in anything. You know, one of the, one of the toughest things that any company goes through is big, drastic change management. And, you know, people are, people don't want to change, especially those people who have been there for a long time. You know, I mean, it could be something as small as, oh, we're not using Outlook for email anymore. We're going to the Google suites. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I, I know Outlook. Find, there's a story out there somewhere that you can tell <laughs> that people are going to be interested in that is going to get the message across that this is a, there's a reason why we're doing this. Here's why we're doing it. It's going to make your life easier, whatever the case might be. But even for things like that, there are stories there that you can tell. And it really is going to make everyone feel like a superstar on your team because, you know, while you might be the one who, who did it and might have put the work in, you know, we, we all understand that, you know, there's a lot of things that teams get credit for. And when those C-suites are giving, you know, those those town halls or whatever, they're going to go, you know, Marcom really helped us because they did da, da 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 And then people started to really understand why we were doing this thing. You know, that's that's a pat on the back. That's a toot of the horn right there. It really does. It, it One, it matters. And two, you're able to do it with a lot more things than you think. Again, these don't have to be epic tales that, you know, take a day and a half to read. You can, you can tell stories very, very quickly, very concisely, and still get the engagement and the information across. I love it. Well, and, it, and to go back to what you originally said, how it, it feels like the story can almost be the cornerstone for your overall comm strategy of whatever that campaign is. Because if the story is designed to unearth the why, then the, the why is going to unearth a set of key messaging. And then when you put all that together, now you've got kind of this overall brand and feeling and campaign that ties it all together. But if it's rooted in story, there's an authenticity and, and I think a genuineness that employees long for that that breeds. And so I love that that sort of, you know, unearth this really interesting framework. Is there anything that you can think of um, while you're going down the storytelling road of your greatest successful storytelling uh, moment and then maybe a not so successful one? I have one. It wasn't, it wasn't so much an epic fail as it was a colossal waste of time. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we want to know about this one then. And, and it was because I didn't navigate 
leadership properly. And at that point, I was I had been successful in doing so. I just didn't I didn't hit the right order in 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 doing that to get the buy-in that I needed. So here's the story is I was presenting at an IC conference. So I, you know, I, I do my thing and then, you know, the next day or whatever it was later in that same day, someone from a different company does a presentation and I go, man, I really, really like that. And I was lucky enough to be able at this conference because I was presenting to bring someone from our organization for free. I brought the person who shoots a lot of our stuff or, or, or at that organization who did. It was a, it was a conference on, on using video in IC. And so you know, this person from this other company, you know, had this really cool idea and it was funny and it was engaging and, and I really liked it. And I looked at, at my teammate and I said, man, I think we can do this. And he said, yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. This would be awesome. So we go back and we, we pitch it to our director who is on the fence about it. And, you know, we say, look, man, this, this can work. You know, we, we can pull this off. We just have to, you just have to give us the green light and, and we can go for it. And so finally she was like, uh, well, let me think about it. And, you know, I'll let you know way they were walking talks basically. So you would get an executive and a staff member, whoever walking from their office to a meeting or whatever, and how, from their, from their office to their car, however, and however long that took is however long you had for the video. And what it was, it was get to know you sessions, basically. And you could ask them, you know, from, you know, anything from what was their first job to what their favorite ice cream is to what they love most about working for that organization. And when they're off guard like that and their guard is, is a little bit lower um, because of the setting and how it is. And, and the cameraman is basically just walking with you and he's just walking backwards. And so it's very casual, very playful. And you get some great, great responses. At least that was the hope. So I had a really good relationship with our COO at the time. And we were in a meeting and we were just kind of chit-chatting. And I told him about this idea. And it went over. And, and they were like, you know, I'm, I'll be the first one to do this. You know, once, you're, once you start, let me know. And so I went back and I told the, my teammate, and I said, Hey, so-and-so said this. And he's like, Oh man, this is awesome. I can't wait. We were, we were writing up questions and, you know, we were already planning things out in our next meeting. We bring it, bring up the, the pitch again and the director shuts it down. And, you know, I very worried about we're too buttoned up for something like that. No one is going to want to do it. Our C-suite's not going to be interested. And it's like, okay, well, do I tell them that the COO is wants to be the first person to do this? Right. And so, so of course I say that and, and I want to get this thing off the ground. And, uh, I see, you know, I was chatting with them in this meeting and blah, blah, blah. And the pissed off look on the person's face <laughs> was, was not what you wanted to see. And we had brought this up in the team meeting because that's where the discussion was happening. And so it was a good idea. The person understood it was a good idea and did not like that they were going to shut it down and someone above them really, really liked the idea. It, it, was, it was a very weird situation, but I think had I maneuvered that differently and maybe brought it up to some of the subjects first or even recorded like a just a quick example one, it might have been different, but it was a project that I think really would have been engaging on our on our internet that never got off the ground until this day. I don't work there anymore, but I'm still buddies with everybody. And, uh, you know, I'll go out and have a drink with with the person I went to the conference with and we'll go, man, we really could have done that so good. <laughs> it's just it's one of those regrets that I have. Well, and it's a shame, right? Uh, because how many ideas die because of ego or because we didn't pitch it right or the way that it fell. And so I think that is such a great tip to, again, this puts everybody back in that leader that you are, you have to facilitate these things in a way to be mindful of, you know, and, and we all are well-intended folks. Hey, we're piloting, we're going to test this. That, that's such an easy entry. It makes everybody feel a lot better than we're going to do it. But I love the actual idea. I love that idea of just 
in the a quick amount of time that it takes to walk from your car. You know, I anything else that you can think of that you've done? The next organization that I worked at, I worked very closely with our foundation, uh, which is the fundraising wing. And I was constantly feeding them stories that they could share with donors. They, you know, they would always go over very, very well. So they're putting on this event and they want to do a story or they, this, their initial idea was to have the SVP of the, of the department tell a story on stage at this fundraising event. And I said, okay. And they brought, they would bring me into these meetings where maybe a story might be involved, even if it wasn't IC, just because of my background. And I said, okay, there was a story that we had started to tell internally about a patient. And so I said, what if we pay to have a video done, three or four minute video, and don't let people tell you all videos need to be 60 seconds. If the story is good, people will listen. So, so we do this video and then why don't we invite that person to this fundraiser? And then after the video plays, we bring that person out. He can then talk about his experience and why he's grateful for this and this and this. And then, you know, people break out your checkbooks. So we do it. We shoot a video with him. The video, you know, plays at this event and every people are in tears. And then she introduces the patient and he comes out and he gets a standing ovation and he starts crying. And then I, it was, it was incredible. And, uh, they raised a ton of money. And it was just, it was one of those, one of those situations and one of those experiences that I'll never forget. And it was something that was just basically brought about because I said, well, why don't we just really tell this story well at this one event? And, you know, they, they, they still talk about that in meetings to this day and they try to replicate it. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do, but it, it works so well, like, you know, I hear about other departments and organizations trying to do the same kind of thing now, even if it's not fundraising, uh, you know, they just, they, they try to jump on the idea and it's good that they're at least thinking that way, even if the execution isn't always great because there's a story in everything there really is. Well, I can't thank you for sharing your story and, and the backstory, uh, behind your story. I, I, I just, I'm so grateful to, to get to talk to you and to, to show, wow, look at the power of storytelling and the power to, you know, connect heads and hearts and to have people, it's such a thing that they, you know, as communicators, you want them to see it and you want them to remember it and internalize it. And it feels like story is such a superpower that we all should look into honing. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. And we look forward to staying connected with you and hearing more stories about your journey in the future. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And there you have it, folks. The power of storytelling is not worth overlooking. Now is the time to find the why within your company. You know, with golf, <laughs> it can be so frustrating. I took lessons during COVID and getting out there on the golf course, I'm just hacking away at that ball. But once I reevaluated why I was really out there, I was able to hit that ball with more ease, more confidence, and more joy. Now, don't go away just yet. We have a new segment featuring our good friends from Reagan Communications Leadership Council on how you can use today's episode learnings right now. Let's tune in. so much for having me today on the podcast. Uh, Mandy Zaransky Hurst from Reagan Communications. I am Reagan's Chief Operating Officer and Head of our Leadership Councils. In particular, today I'll be speaking with Chris Berger, Head of Enterprise Communications at Atrium Health. Chris was formerly the Senior Director of Comms at Walmart as well. Chris, thank you for sharing today. Well, thanks for allowing me to be here. It's always great to share whatever information that I can with other communication professionals. Let's start off by you telling us a little bit about your role currently at Atrium and your background. Yeah, so Atrium Health is uh, is really spread across the Southeast, and we have about 70,000 teammates now, actually, 40 hospitals, 1,400 locations. So you can imagine it's really important for us to get internal information out as well as external. 
it's been an exciting journey. I joined, you know, Atrium Health about four years ago, almost five years now, and have been really on this journey to share stories a little bit more effective, both internally and externally, and really built out a brand journalism team that I'm super proud of and really make sure that we have the right content going to the right people at the right time. So how does your comms team create content? Yeah, so we we really are purposeful. We have uh, obviously, you know, different levels of leadership meetings. And out of those meetings, we we come together in a content creation meeting where everybody is represented from their service line or their business unit that they represent. And uh, we come together and talk about the things that are most pressing. And we have ongoing topics that we like to talk about, but there's also things that come up. And as you can imagine, with COVID and everything right now, a lot of topics that are, you know, come out of left field that we have to address. And um, and those, that's where that information bubbles up. And uh, we kind of look at it and we prioritize it. And depending on what information is needed at that time, that's really what we go after. And we're really looking at a ton of different sources in order to make sure that we're hitting the most uh, needed information, both internally and externally. So it's really data driven. And um, but it, there is also a fair amount of just knowing and keeping your, you know, the, the, the pulse of the organization of knowing what needs to be talked about at that given time. What are some of the sources that you look at in order to make those decisions? Externally, obviously, we're looking at a lot of social channels. We're seeing whatever the, um, the chatter is out there. What is it that we're getting the most questions about that come in through our, all of our social channels? And then internally, it's we have a really robust internal communication channel. So out of 70,000 teammates, we definitely have a decent amount of feedback of, of what teammates want to hear about. So... Chris, you had mentioned that you pull together kind of a cross-functional team in order to bubble up the most important topics for content. How are you having employees send you stories, send you content? Yeah, so each one of our service lines, uh, and obviously when we talk service lines in healthcare, you know, it's like a business unit um, relating back to my world at Walmart and other organizations. But, uh, you know, you can imagine we have a children's service line and a cancer and a heart and, you know, those type of uh, areas that uh, are really essential for providing care for our community. We're kind of set up like an agency where we have someone that represents each one of those areas, or maybe they represent two of those areas. And so they're intricately involved in the leadership meetings that happen. And really, that's where we harvest uh, a lot of the stories. One of the really big things that we do is we we have these things called connect a purpose that start at every single meeting. Uh, and those stories are things that are happening uh, across Atrium Health that really, um, one, they center us because it reminds us of why we're here and what we're doing. But two, that's where we hear a lot about it, these stories that are happening organically and, and then we ask more about those stories, say, hey, can we find out? And we get all the re- required, you know, forms signed and everything so we can share that story more broadly. And, uh, and that's really been an essential part for kind of the storytelling aspect. And it's really ingrained in our culture here. So it's, it's been great. Your team is employing a lot of different channels for content distribution internally and externally. Talk to me for a second about what channels are working best and what methods? So is video working best on social? Are infographics working best internally? You know, tell us what's working right now. Yeah, certainly videos are just an amazing way of telling stories. So those have always done very well. Uh, And I think that we have, like you said, a lot of channels. We have an internal app, but we also have an intranet that's very robust. Externally, we heavily focus on our our blog. We have a Daily Dose blog where we feed the latest information. And from there, basically, uh, all of our other channels, our social channels and everything else is really populated from there. And then we use a couple other forms uh, just to make sure that the information is getting out there. We have a heavy internal uh, external advocacy program where anytime we have information we want to share, that we're posting that to the advocacy tool that then we use our very 
uh, invigorated teammates here who love our mission uh, to push that out. What are some of the ways in which you you go about doing that testing? Right. It's it's really just trying new things. I think a lot of times uh, we we stay safe, uh, way too safe as communicators, and we're not really you know out there on the cutting edge. And I think it's just getting out there and trying them. So what we just do is we have an idea. We're not sure it's going to work, um, but we decide, okay, let's let's try something new. And then we push it out. We, we did this recently with videos from our ER docs. We weren't sure that this was the right thing to do, or but we needed to figure out a way to emotionally appeal to everyone in each one of our markets that was a very raw, unproduced, video that that showed the real thing that was happening inside our ERs and and inside our ICU units with these COVID patients. And some of them almost make you cry because the doctors are telling stories about how they're having to, um, you know, you know, the last time people ever talked was begging to have the vaccine and they and they could not administer it because they were still sick. And so it's just finding that emotional appeal and really going out there on a limb um, sometimes. I think you just have to. And then you just measure it from there. If it, if it falls flat, pivot and go to something else. But I think um, there's a quote I heard recently, and it was talking about how ships are safest in the harbor, but that's not where they're meant to be. They're meant to be out on the oceans. And I think that's one of the things that uh, resonates with me is like, we need to be out there on the oceans trying the things that we're, we're made to do. And, and sometimes it means doing things that, that, that you haven't done before. Wonderful advice. Sail those ships and measure. That's right. If you're interested in more information about Reagan's Communications Leadership Council, an exclusive membership for senior level communicators and their entire communications teams, please go to commscouncil at reagan.com. Internal Comms Pro, the podcast, is also proudly supported by the Circle Broadcast Suite, an entire suite built for internal communicators. Learn more at circle.com. Internal Comms Pro, the podcast, is produced by the Internal Comms Pro Collective. Don't forget to visit www.internalcomspro.com slash show notes for our free resource guides. Thank you for listening.